So he's going to he's going to turn the tables now. We're in a season of incredible exposure of the enemy. He's exposed and he's not finished with this by the way. He is exposing exposing exposing. Shaking shaking shaking. Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12. I know you don't like it. You like 11 and 13, but you're going to have to deal with 12 because everything that can be shaken is being shaken and he's not finished shaking. It's probably going to get a little worse before it gets better. And he's going to show this country just what a mess people can make that reject God and reject his ways until the point of where the whole nation's going to say, you know what? They're not just off. They're crazy. You know, you know, I'm telling you the truth. You watch the news just like I do and you find yourself shaking your head and you go, these people are crazy. They want to teach three-year-olds that they can, they can become a little boy and not a girl. These people, are, I'm telling you, I'm not, I, I love these people. God's going to save a whole bunch of them. But I find myself watching it going, 50 years ago, if somebody had told me this was going to happen, I'd say, no, no, nobody's going to get that confused. I don't even, I don't, I don't talk bad about these people. I love these people. God's going to save these people. I pray for these people. And I just look at them and go, how, how did, how did they get to this point of confusion, of deception? They would not want to fight over calling the bones the right. You can't call it a male or female bone. Have you, no, some of you look at me like, what are you talking about? They're, they're going after the archaeologists now because when they find, dig up bones, they identify it as a male or female, a man or a woman. So you can't use those terms about those bones. You don't, some of you think I'm kidding you. I am not kidding you. But I'm not trying to get off on a weird tangent. I'm trying to tell you, God is showing us now just how when man opposes him and, and, and rebels against him, just how deceived and confused and, and lost we get. By the time this revival hits full strength, you are going to see millions and millions of desperate people that are so fed up with the confusion and the nonsense and the foolishness and the lack of identity and the lack of understanding and the lack of destiny and purpose. And when God flips this switch and this outpouring hits in earnest, they are going to run to him by the millions and millions. And I'm not just talking about America. I'm talking about the Middle East. I'm talking about Asia. I'm talking about people right now that wouldn't allow the gospel to be preached in their country. By the time he's finished with this outpouring, there will be millions and millions and millions of them worshiping Jesus. You better trust me. I'm telling you, I have seen this in the Spirit. And it will not be stopped. You can trust me on this as well. It will not be stopped. If you ever want, if, if there's any psalm you need to spend some time in right now, it's Psalm 2. They will not stop him. So, Lord, now that you've sat down, some of you might want to stand back up. <laughs> so, Lord, we thank you for mercy. The mercy seat, the blood of Jesus that comes not to the healthy, but to the sick. Those that really need a physician, you came and you still do it today. 
And when we get so far from you, and the world becomes so confused, you are still the God who loves to save. You love to give them mercy. You love, you love it when Nineveh responds to you and you can say, oh, I don't have to do this now. I don't have to destroy them. I can save them. You love that. You love transforming hardened, evil sinners into worshiping lovers of God. You love taking the, the, the John Newtons of the world, slave trader. Capturing men and women at the point of a spear or the barrel of a gun, jerking them away from their family, transporting them across the world and selling them to another human being. And yet you found this man and you transformed him. And the slave trader became the pastor of William Wilberforce, the greatest abolitionist probably in the history of the world. How does God take a slave trader and make him the pastor of a man that does more to eliminate slavery probably than any human being that's ever lived? And gives him the song that will be sung by more human beings more times on this planet than any other song that's ever been written. Amazing grace. He loves to save. Mercy, 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 mercy. We have tapped into a root of mercy. So now, Father, here in this place where passionate words were spoken, Passionate pleas were made. We must stand for freedom. And they reasoned with one another. And they, they pled with one another. And they passionately spoke words that live to this day in history. Here in the, this place. We raise our cry. And we offer not a, not a speech or a message that is not really about physical freedom or liberty because that which you had them fight for was for something eternal. It was a destiny for a nation to be free so it could be a voice for the gospel to the ends of the earth. And we refuse to let that go. We will never let it go. Never. We will never let it die. Never. We make our appeal just like they did. And we stand firm. And we say, we will never let it go. We will lay, we will we will cling to our destiny as a nation. And no demon, no principality, no blood-sacrificing spirit of Baal, Zephon, or any other of those spirits will steal from us our destiny. You, you will save America. America shall be saved. America shall be saved. And we will once again trumpet this message of the gospel of the kingdom to the ends of the earth. We will be the ultimate servants of the planet, taking the love and message of Jesus Christ and the gospel of the kingdom to the ends of the earth. We refuse 
to yield. To, we refuse to give it up. We refuse it. We refuse it. And we say to every system, every demon, every system, every party, every person, every religion, every idol, we say to all of these things, you will not have our destiny. You will not steal it. You will not, you will not do it. Because we have a verdict. We have a verdict from heaven in favor of the saints. America shall be saved. America shall be saved. And that's the only sword you need most of the time. When you see devastation in your city, in your state, and you're praying, and you don't know what to pray, that's a strong enough decree right there. Just raise your hand and say, I decree America shall be saved. In the name of Jesus, America shall be saved. I plead your blood over my sins and the sins of my nation. And I'll just finish with saying this. The great turnaround has begun. And their great turnaround will be finished.